Hi, I'm Dr. Amy Gilliland, and I'm here with my assistant, Katie, and we're going to show you epidural positioning approaches. Most often in the hospital, what you'll be given is two pillows. So you're going to want to place those pillows between your client's knees. You want to go ahead and lift up your legs, Katie? Thank you. There we go. So this is standard hospital, what you will find in, uh, what you will find most everywhere. So one of the things that you need to be careful about is what is the position of the pelvis? So just stay exactly the way you are. This is what most people do, is that they tilt their pelvis back. Well, what we know from optimal fetal positioning is that this is going to encourage the baby's body to turn OP. So what we want to make sure is, is that this pelvis is in a neutral position like this, okay, because that's going to encourage the baby's body to go OA. One of, the mo one of the major complications that happens with an epidural is babies turning from OA into posterior positions, and that's what can take labor with an epidural much longer. So when we're at bedside, that's what we're paying attention to what is going on with the pelvis and sitting there. And usually I find everywhere from every two to four minutes, I'm sitting there and I'm pushing that pelvis forward just because with that baby inside, it's just so natural for that person to do this. So that's what we do. We're going to sit there and do this. So the other two positions, um, the positions of the leg that are going to encourage the baby to be OA. This one is side lying, all right, with the knees are bent evenly. The other one is called semi prone. And so, what I'm going to have Katie do is I'm going to have Katie straighten out that bottom leg so the leg is straight, and she's going to put this leg over here and see what happens to her pelvis when she's in this position. So, most people tend to find this very comfortable. This also reminds me to tell you that whenever anyone has an epidural, we want to make sure that we're not uh, raising their thigh up here in this hip joint more than 90 degrees. Because once you start jackknifing this leg up, go ahead and bend your knee up like this, what happens is, is that strains the ligaments in the back. And since the person with the epidural can't feel it, it causes injury and back pain that can last two to three years. Yes, every single day for two to three years afterwards. So that's why respecting this 90 degree angle is so, so, so important. All right, so I showed you side lying position with the knees bent. And here, this is semi prone. Let me show you the next thing you can add into the mix. So I'm going to have Katie just go into side lying again. So with those two knees bent up, all right. And then this is called a reboso which comes from the mountain people of Guatemala and Mexico, a part of their tradition, their daily lives, all right? So I'm just gonna show you a very simple thing that they have shared with us. And that is that if I put the rebozo here, and you can certainly do this with a sheet or with a long towel in the hospital, um, if you don't know, or at home, of course. I'm gonna come around the bed. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to rock Katie's hips. Now imagine what that does for the baby inside. Gives it that motion that's been missing. Okay, so let's have you get into semi-prone. I'll move those pillows here. That bottom leg straight. Let me get this under your knees better, Katie. There we are. And look, I can still rock. And you can do short bursts, okay? So now I'm going to have you pretend you're not pregnant for a moment, Katie, and don't have an epidural, and I'm going to have you scoot your body up all the way to the edge of this bed. Well, tell you what, I'm going to do, let me change that. Let's have you switch sides, so I'm going to come around and help you. Using this scarf here, come around. And so this can also help people. You can help them to turn. Now, if that baby wasn't descending or we didn't have dilation, one of the things you can do is what's called the Texas rollover, which I learned from hospital doulas in Columbia, South Carolina at Lexington Medical Center. Why they call it the Texas rollover, I don't know. But we're gonna have you scooch up to the edge of the bed and you're gonna hang 
this top leg over and you're gonna straighten out that bottom one. That's right. And I'm gonna stand here and support this thigh as it dangles over the bed and I'm gonna do this in, in pulses, rapid pulses, okay? And you do this for 10 minutes and then we're gonna have Katie change sides, okay? Turn over and then we would do the same thing on the other side. And you do this for about 40 minutes or an hour. So two or three turns on each side and then hopefully you'll have progress. So the next step up from using the rebozo and using pillows is to use the peanut ball. So I'm gonna show you how to size the peanut ball. The smallest one here for me is this color green. And so I'm gonna have Katie lift up this top leg Bend that bottom leg. There we go. Now you can just keep this where it's natural for you. So we can see here this is going straight down. So we know that this is not the right size. This is too small for this position. So let's move this one. And now here I'm going to get the next one up, which is for me is blue. Alrighty. And now there we go. Her leg is in a neutral position. So we can see it's going straight like this. So this is the right position. This is the right size ball for her. So let's see one that's too big. Oh, and there her leg goes straight up. And you can also ask the person, which one felt more comfortable to you? The blue one. Okay, <laughs> so they'll often have an opinion. Now, if all you had was this one, you can certainly deflate it in order to get it down to that size, but it'll feel a little bit floppier. And the same thing with the red one, if you just needed, or the, with the blue one. If you needed that one to be slightly bigger, with these high quality balls, you can, uh, you can inflate them uh, several centimeters larger. Okay, so let's put that blue one in. There we go. So one of the things I want you to notice is how much larger that pelvic outlet is with the peanut ball than it is with the pillows. Here's the pillows. And there you get, when they get compressed, this is all you get. So here we've got maybe eight more inches. And does that feel comfortable? Oh, yes. Yeah. That's what you'll find is that most pregnant people go, oh, this just really feels really good. And that outlet is absolutely straight. So there's nothing impeding baby's progress through the pelvis, okay? So this is side lying. If you're going to do semi-prone, we're gonna move that peanut ball. So you straighten out that bottom leg, and here we go, okay? Let's try it just a little bit there. Okay, how's that? Good. So is that good? Mm -hmm. So here, I think that's probably a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And once again, if we wanted to, I can use the rebozo and do some rocking or some pulses. Now, when it comes to second stage, um, the position that we can use with the peanut ball is called the tuck position. So I'm going to have you get into just bring your knee up like you're inside the bottom leg too. Put this between you and I'm going to have you grab it with your arms. There we go. Okay, so this is called the tuck position. And when if you feel a contraction coming, I just want you to grasp that ball and curve your back and push. Okay, now the care provider can see everything that they want to. Um, and it's not impeded. Their vision is not impeded at all. But this people say it feels really good. It gives them uh, that, that the pushing sensations are natural, that they know what to do, and it feels very good to be holding on to something while they're going through that motion. So there we go. That's the tuck position. The next one is called the fire hydrant position. So if you want to get on your hands and knees, and this one we would not use with someone with an epidural, okay? And then I'm going to have you lift up this knee here, and I'm going to slide that ball underneath. There we go. So this is something we would use when we don't have descent, and we really need to bring that baby down, because we get almost a 90 degree angle um, on the pelvis here. So that means it's opened up very wide, and we have that asymmetrical position. So that's opening up this side very wide. And so in several contractions, hopefully this would help to turn a posterior baby. Okay. 
And the last one is if you just want to sit up on the bed. Yeah. Um, no, just sit up like you were, you were sitting up in a bed and here, I'll put this, this one behind you, okay? This is another way to use the peanut ball is with someone who is sitting up. And then I'm gonna come around here and I'm gonna have you butterfly this knee out here, bend that leg out there and lift this one up. There we go. So this is another position. Now you can see that the pelvis is tucked down like this. So this is a good one for early in labor or an alternate position when people need to rest or when you do a need to do a fetal monitor strip, okay? As opposed to just lying with one's legs out or sitting in the, um, in the rocking chair, okay? So people with an epidural, you could throw this in the mix if they're able to sit up, all right? So this once again just gives variety to what the baby is experiencing and hopefully hastening their descent through the pelvis. Thank you. And thanks to Katie. I have to get through all the peanut balls. There we go.